Today we're working on G12. This is an EPP modified block because the book doesn't have the little dividers, so this makes it easier to English paper piece. So what we're going to do is you see these pieces right here. Put these pieces together in pairs and then connect this to the pairs. So you're going to do this piece this together, this together, and this together. That's your first unit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and glue base these on the edges. And then I'm going to stitch them together in pairs. Like so. Okay, so we have these paired up. You want to take this and you're going to baste this edge and this edge first and then these edges and you want to do that the same way on every one. The reason is is that you want these to nest into each other like that. And so these are the tails are going to fit together and then you will take them and I use the tape method. And then I stitch flat. I will take this and I will use my stiletto and I pick it up and I get into there, which I can't do one handed. And then I base this with a flat stitch. Oops. And then you get a really nice hidden stitch. If you have a directional fabric you want to make sure that you make it all one direction. What I like to do usually is if it's a stripe or something I will make it so that it goes in each one so then you have this like radiation effect. Okay so now I have my bits paired up and there are eight of these pieces you got four right hand and four left hand, however you want to define it. So I'm going to take, this goes here. So I'm going to take all of them at the same time because the other ones go between the bits. So only work with the one shape, the Laboid Confusion. This one goes. And then I'm going to baste it. I prefer to baste the longest side last. I'm not sure where I got that from. I like to have the long side last because that way the flag or the tag or whatever you want to call it folds away from it and you can get a nice crisp point. So I'm going to glue base this and then I'm going to attach it to each one of these units. I decided to glue base this way and this way. The reason is, is because that way you get a sharper point. If you have two folded edges and then you try to fold that in on this kind of a shape, I don't get as sharp of a point. So that way I can control my points a little better. My, um, I'm using a clear box. I carry all my stuff in it and then I can use it as my table. So I got little glue bits all over the place here. But that's just the nature of the beast. Um, so then I'm going to base this here, fold it, and then I'll base this here and fold it again. Okay, so I've taped my piece onto this. Now, again, I use this, this flat back method, and this is the reason why. You want to match up your point at the end, and that's not exactly perfect, but you can fudge the rest of it in when you, when you start sewing. So I will pull this back and make that right as a sharp edge. And then... I've had to pull this in quite a bit, and it looks like it slipped, but I'm going to take this point and line it up with this point and start in. So this is actually going to be a bit bowed, but it will work itself in. as you. So you're going to start at one end and come to about, I don't know, here-ish, not past this. And then you 
tie off and then you start at the other end starting with those points matched and that's the trick because that way when you finish this it'll all work itself in and any paper bowing or whatever you want to call it will go away and ease in once the papers are removed of the final block but you want to make sure that this is one big line so that when you attach the next bits it's straight and the right size you need to lift up your flaps before you start to stitch because if you stitch these down you're not going to be able to get your papers out so now I have all four of these units made and what I'm going to do is I am going to connect them together and so I've done that here and what you want to do is you want to lift up your flap and I take my stiletto and I peel that away with my, I usually use my stiletto, but I peel that away because you want to stitch on the edge. On the edge. And you want to line up, make that a big straight line. But here, you see that the points don't quite match. A lot of that has to do with the fabric folding. And you can ease that in when you stick on these other pieces. Once I got this into two halves, I'm going to match up my middles after I fold my flaps back. I'm going to match up my middles and then I'm going to see where that lines up on the ends and make those work. But the middle is the most important part. So from the back before you stitch it, I've decided that I'm going to go from the middle outward down each side because with this mass of stuff it's easier to do that way and they should all nest in each other and real nice so I'm going to stitch down here onto the end and then I'm going to come back and start where the points meet there and stitch down to the end okay so now I got the middles made and I got to put these pieces in instead of ending here I'm going to start here so that I don't end up with a flap in the same location so I'm going to do, I'm going to ba actually I'm going to baste here to here to here to here on each piece and then tape it into here and stitch it on. Okay, so now I got the whole middle of my block and I got bits left. I got two sizes of this stuff. The longer pieces are what we're going to work on next. And then these are for the corners and I'll set those aside. So I'm going to base these, I'm going to put these sides down first, and then I'm going to put these down with the glue, and this is my last one. And then I'm going to attach them to the side. So this is different. Usually we have this part being bigger than this part, but in this case, the piece is bigger. And it's probably because of the way I assembled my points. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to tack this down on this end to about about the thickness of my finger and then I am going to stitch it from there to there and it should be able to work it in and we'll find out what happens so I tacked down this side and it took up some of the issue and then I'm gonna sew the rest of this down alright so I've stitched this and now you can see that the edges are lined up just right for the corner additions. Okay, so I have this now done. I've pulled all the tags away from the edge and I have the corner pieces left. These pieces I'm going to baste sides and then this part and this part last. And these pieces I'm going to glue baste this side and then this side and then I always do the hypotenuse last so it has this crisp edge going on to what it's attaching to. Okay, now my pieces are glue basted and I've taken them and connected them with my tape and then I'm going to stitch them together in corner bits and then I'll be able to take these corner bits and attach them. Okay, so I got my corners all connected. So now I'm going to connect these to my main block. I'm going to tape these here. 
And I've got this one just loosely taped. And so then I'm going to start at one end. And I took this past the first piece into the second, and then I went back to the other side and I'm working my way to the middle. This guarantees, well, there's never any guarantees, but this helps keep this aligned on either side and then you can work it in in the middle. So now that the corners are connected, you have a completed G12 block.